Oh, they were serious about this, like, funky soul jazz music. I feel like you're pandering to my fro right now. Hi, everybody. Thank you. Hello. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi, Miss Red. Oh, good morning. Thank you guys so much for jo joining us. And really excited to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad. Uh, it's very exciting to be here with my fellow PAX ambassadors to talk to you all about growing your community. And what are we doing right here by having everybody in this room? We've grown our community. Because you probably don't know who I am, but now you do. And everybody else. And it's a learning experience for everyone involved. I'm dead serious, too. You guys think <laughs> So I would like to go ahead and introduce our panelists, also known as our PAX Ambassadors for 2020. This is a new program that was implemented this year, and it's a great way for us to figure out ways to improve upon PAX, to enjoy PAX, and from different perspectives. My name is Christina Ariel, and I am the PAX Tabletop Gaming Ambassador. And to my left, every, well, everyone is to my left, we have Jesse Cox, our YouTube, our YouTube ambassador. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me yeah. give you a round of applause. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then. We have Sonya Reed, also known as Am I Gerd, it's Firefox. <laughs> it's our streamer. Next to her, we have the delightful Robin Hunnick, who is an amazing game developer. And then we have Justin Wong, our eSports liaison. <laughs> Everybody on this stage is a legend. Yeah. It's cool, it's cool. Uh, Not like in a, in a way. Nobody go that far. But like, wow. those people are pretty cool and no I'm excited. So I figure we would kind of talk on some staple points here. I'm just saying words, don't listen to me. So I'm gonna start with all of you, my first question is, what's kind of your origin story in your field? Like, how did you get started? So, who would like to start? I guess I'll go first. Yeah! Because I came on time, but a little late. <laughs> um, I started literally growing up at uh, New York City at Chinatown Fair. It's like an arcade that's still there, but it's kind of like a redemption a game center now. But literally, I was just a kid going there playing just Street Fighter, and I didn't know if there were people playing or there was a community. But eventually, people started talking to me, be like, hey, man, you're, you're kind of good. And I'm like, really? <laughs> you know? But other than that, it was just people were very nice. They want to make friends. It's a way to just leave just your home, and you want to do something to stay out of trouble, because that's what we were. We were kids trying to stay out of trouble. And these guys really took me as one of their own brought me out to tournaments, made me travel. I had to lie to my parents. <laughs> Don't do that. I, but you know, a kid's gotta do what they gotta do to represent the arcade. That's um, right. But yeah, I mean, because of that arcade and that small niche community, I'm up here right now as a PAX Esports ambassador talking to you guys and doing a bunch of things with like streaming, traveling around the world, playing video games. And that's because it started me putting 25 cents in this small arcade cabinet at Chinatown Fair, New York. Yay, that's awesome. Aww. That's a really great story. <laughs> Justin, origins. <laughs> Robin? <laughs> uh, you know, it's funny, but uh, I'm, I am not a world-class Street Fighter player, so. <laughs> but I am, I am a game developer, and when I started in game development, I was actually just a person studying computer science. And it was a similar thing. I got interested in computer science in college, started programming when I was like 19, learned how to program at a time when you could just pick it up and try it. So I learned to program on a, on a Mac. Um, my first programming language was called HyperCard. It was a really long time yeah. ago. Uh, th wow. This is all coded language for saying I'm very old. Um, <laughs> But, uh, but it, there were no barriers to entry for women in, computer, in computing at that time. It wasn't odd to be a girl or you know, weirdo in computer science. So I did it, and then uh, at some point I started working on a simulation for some robots that I was building, and I decided to try and work on it inside a game, and I started working with Half-Life to simulate the behavior of those robots in Half-Life. And the more that I worked with the game code, the more I wanted to meet game developers. So I started introducing myself to game developers, 
And my very first conference that I met a game developer at was in New York City. Um, after a panel, I just walked up to the stage and said, you think you know what you're talking about, but you totally don't. I'm actually a PhD in, in AI and blah, 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 blah. And you know what? They looked at me and they said, that's passion. You're a nerd. I love you. And introduced me to three other people who introduced me to three other people and eventually ended up dropping out of my PhD to go work on The Sims. So don't be afraid to come up and tell us that we don't know what we're talking about because it might be your entire future after that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Or just say hi, you know. Yeah, no. <laughs> the point being that people who didn't have to listen to me were interested in hearing what I had to say because the games community is that welcoming and that kind. And I was really nervous to walk up to that person and sort of express my opinion and have thoughts. And they listened and they smiled and they made me feel better. So I love this community for that reason. I think that this show is a perfect example of the kind of things that games can build. Awesome. 100%. Well, I'm sorry to shock all of you also, but I also am not a Street Fighter. <laughs> um, I did have a start in game development, though. Um, I started coding, and I wanted to develop games back in college. Um, but at the same time, I wanted to also network and kind of learn more about people in the industry and meet more game developers and kind of get a sense of that community. So um, I went to my first E3 in 2011, and uh, I saw the games industry, I saw the way that people treated each other, everyone was so welcoming, um, and I knew that that's what I wanted to do. I knew that I wanted to be in the game industry, I knew that I wanted to be a part of this community, so I started to go to more conventions. I went to PAX East in 2012, um, met a bunch of other people, and it just encouraged me to start streaming, and then we built up a, an audience. I've started a Minecraft series that nobody has heard about called Mayanite, and, um, RIP season three, and, <laughs> um, and yeah, it's just opened up way more doors to going to more conventions and meeting more people in the industry, and um, now we're, we're all over the place doing hosting and streaming, and now we're here. Hmm. Hey, and now we're here. That's all. Mr. Cox. Wow. Uh, I, at one point in time, was a teacher, and uh, then during the summers when, you know, you're supposed to do something with your life. I would just make like dumb videos and would post them on the internet. And one year, I remember one of my very good friends was like, dude, you can make money doing this. And I was like, what? <laughs> and uh, it just so happened that around that time was when we had our big, what would that be called? Recession, I think. Yeah. Right? <laughs> 2009, the 2010. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, my teaching career ended at <laughs> that time when they let a lot of us go, and so I had nothing. I moved back home with the parents. Uh, I had my computer and clothes, and that was it. And so I just made videos for fun, and uh, a year later was out in L.A. and living it up. So I just that's what happens if you just do it every single day with a passion that's of great. a man who has nothing else but <laughs> making videos. <laughs> Consistent. Yeah, <laughs> consistency. That's great. And I am a jury main, so I'll see you later, oh. <laughs> man, when you beat me because that's a low tier character. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got my start. I am a cosplayer, and I wore a really cool cosplay, and people were like, I like that. And I was like, thanks. <laughs> and then I kept doing the thing, and then I, for being in that community, like, I like it, I enjoy it, but it was like I wanted to, I don't know, I wanted to be a part of something really cool, and I went, as luck would have it, to lunch with Satine Phoenix, and she said, hey, I wanna talk to you about some stuff, and I was like, cool, and then we didn't talk again for another couple months. And then she says, hey, do you wanna be on a show called Sirens of the Realms? And I was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> so, fun fact, I had never played D&D. &D. I wanted to play D&D, I had never played D&D &D until that stream was my very first time. I played D&D &D for the first time ever live on stream. That's amazing. And figured, had to like figure everything out. And I mean, we'll go into it because we're going to have serious talk. It's called Real Talk. As a black woman, it's hard to find a gaming center to like a start for a tabletop game because it, there's a lot of gatekeeping and we all acknowledge that and understand it. It's just facts. 
So to find a way to get in was hard. So to have that, like I spent like my childhood reading comic books and being a nerd by myself in my little bubble. Yeah. So to like finally be like, I'm gonna let my free flag fly. Like I'm doing all of this. I'm gonna play the games, I'm gonna dress up. I'm 30 something years old, who cares anymore? And <laughs> so I started like, and I'm I mean- I'm with you on that, I'm with you on that. I'm 34 years old. <laughs> <laughs> But it's one of those things where once that door was open, I was like, I fell in love with just role playing, with being present in game, with friends, and just being a part of this community and being able to have like, to have people listen to you is a weird thing. Like the fact yeah. that you guys are sitting here, that's an honor to have people give a shit what you have to say. Like, it's cool. It's an amazing thing in this community just the D&D community, the gaming community, the tabletop community has become such an amazing part of my life and has been very welcoming to me and has opened doors to do other things. And I've gotten, like, when I started, I was like, oh, like, no one cares who you are. No one cares what you're doing. And then it's like, you have people, I ended up doing Critical Role and Dice Camera Action and all of these things. And it's not, for any other reason than I'm passionate about it. Like, I am passionate about it. I spend my days reading manuals and talking about gaming and gaming and being around people who like gaming because gamers are the coolest fucking people in the world. Mm -hmm. like, you guys are super Yay. cool and I love you, like, just for caring enough to actually do it. And it's just an amazing community to be a part of. And that's why I spend every day trying to grow in it and make it better and be surrounded by it. So moving on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'd like to know what is it that you do to promote a sense of community when you're engaging like online with via Twitter, Instagram, how do you or when you're streaming? What is it that you do I guess to make people feel welcome, to let them know like that you are a space where they can learn or talk or they don't feel like this air of, I know there's this big thing of internet celebrity and people get afraid to talk to you and they don't realize like, hey, like we're literally all just people. Yeah. So I'm like, how do you make people feel welcome? What do you do? Um, I would say for my case that um, around everywhere around the world, there are local tournaments about from the fighting game community. So I want to sh just show the light, because obviously there's so many communities that they, they stream, but they might not get that much viewership, or not a lot, none of people around the area knows about the community. Um, so I try my best to like really tweet up, tweet about the streams, go to the locals when I'm traveling around the world, you know, make YouTube videos about, hey man, these locals do exist. Mm -hmm. It's not about like the staples like WNF in SoCal or NOBC in New York. There's literally locals in everywhere around the United States, around South America, Europe, Asia, every day, and it's constant just action, and they're just trying to be noticed. And then I did a program last year where I flew out like 13 players that wanted a shot, that weren't sponsored, and to, and to go to compete at the world tournament just for the exposure, the experience, and a chance to be noticed by players that are, that are watching, players like you, gamers like you, so they can have a, a chance to shine. So it's really all about that, that, that love in the gaming community because obviously everyone games, everyone's normals. Even though we are up here, we're just like you. We just wanna play some games yeah. and we wanna make some friends. And that's kind of what I do for, for my community and how to just to make them grow. And even now, like I just tell people, hey, if you guys have a local tournament, and you need some exposure, you can even use my Twitch channel. I'll give you my password. Mm. Just don't go into my, just don't change my PayPal information. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> you know? but Dan, I, I messaged yeah, you. I, mean, I, I, <laughs> I never met these guys before, but I'm like, hey, I want your scene to grow. I want people to know that there was a Tekken 7 tournament at Lancaster, Philadelphia. Like, that's random, yeah. right? And um, I want people to know. So that's kind of what I try to do. Try to use like my star power to just really show more about there are people out here that are trying to get good. Let's show them. That's so cool. Wow. That's really, really, cool. really. Like, I try. Awesome. You know, I was going to say that there's a couple ways in which I've tried to build community over the years. Um, it started when I was still in school as a, as a programmer. 
um, and a woman in computer science. I was the only woman in my, pro in my department, um, and I was pretty much the only girl I ever met at any of the gaming events I went to that were local. Um, I, I started hanging out with that person that I met in New York City, and then they introduced me to three or four people that were actually here in Boston that worked at a company called Looking Glass. I don't know if any of you are familiar with System Shock or Thief. These are sort of systems-based games that were being made in the early 90s for the PC. And um, at the time, you, in order to get a game out in a store, you had to know someone who knew someone who knew someone who could introduce you to someone who could give you an interview that you might be able to make a game for a publisher that would put it on a disc and then get it into a store as a piece of physical software. So it was like a huge chain of basically white guys, no offense, but like a big long line of, of people that had a lot of capital between you, the little tiny game developer, and being on the shelf at GameStop, right? And so the reason um, that I cared about that, even as a, as a, as a young nerd, was that um, it meant you couldn't play weird games. The barrier to entry was so high, and the cost for making software was so high, that you know when you went to the game store, it was like, hey, football guy, racing car guy, oh, cool, other sports, oh, is that a soccer game? Weird, you know, at the time, there were very, there were very few kinds of selections, and everything was kind of very fixed. So me and these, these weirdos from, from, uh, from MIT and Boston decided to get together in a, a room in California with some other friends that we knew and make video games and put them up on the internet for free. And we called it the Indie Game Jam. And it was the first game jammer ever on the planet Earth. So I'm technically the first female game jammer on the planet Earth ever in all time. Ooh. Yeah, so that's that little meeting with, it was about 15 people uh, turned into a second game jam, which then turned into a third game jam, which then became the experimental gameplay workshop at GDC where we showed experimental games, and that made the concept of game jams go viral, and pretty soon I was on the, the theme board for the global game jam, and now, today, 20 years later, the global game jam is uh, held over, uh, almost over 100 sites on the planet Earth, right? Like, mm. that there are people making games all over the world now, and putting them up on the internet for free, and not only that, they're streaming games, and money doing that and so when I look back over my career I think like it's not just like taking it back to where you started it's actually also about kind of creating those spaces like you're doing where people can get together and practice something that they really care about the passion that individual people exhibit across the world when they do something like a Ludum Dare or the Global Game Jam is so amazing and it just started with a few of us wanting to do something for fun you know, just for fun. So it, I think a lot of community comes from spontaneous creativity and the desire to spend time together, and games is a perfect example of how that's happened. Yeah. I think that's incredible, just what, you know, you and a handful of people yeah. can just, just somebody's passion can just snowball into and yeah. evolve into. That's incredible. Thanks. Oh my God, awesome. Proud of you. Um, for me, I, I believe that you reap what you sow. Definitely, especially when it comes to streaming and kind of curating your community and just appreciating and being a part of your own community. From the beginning, I wanted to have just my own internet family, and that's why yeah. I called you know my internet family my Fox family <laughs> because it is literally a, a second family to me. You know, when I when I first started streaming, I was full time working. I was living on my own. I was also uh, finishing up classes at my my college for for coding, and uh, I didn't have a lot of free time. And my my only free time in between, I was like, I just want to blow off some steam and play League of Legends mm -hmm. and just do awful and be hot garbage and <laughs> have people laugh at me. So. Um, when I started streaming, uh, it was kind of like an escape for me. It was kind of like an outlet for me to, to be like, <sighs> okay, now I can just hang out, chat with some people, play League of Legends, and just connect. So it was kind of my outlet. But I felt like as that grew, and I started getting more and more messages of people being like, you know, I, I've watched all of Maya Night, and I've watched like all of your League streams, and it's, it's nice to be able to have a place where I can go and just be weird on the internet and like hang out and connect with people. So, um, and, and, and talking about how that was kind of their outlet. And I think that's what kind of flipped the switch for me, and I'm like, this, this was something where I just wanted to kind of like hang out and get it all out and connect with people, but now it's, it's kind of creating that platform for other people to yeah. come in and be like, oh, like now yeah. I can kind of be myself here too. Yeah, so, and I, I feel like, again, it kind of curates within the community too, where when you have new people coming in, the people who are good and like appreciate you and, and appreciate the community, they're just more than open arms and like the biggest welcome. So 
Um, I love that, and I, I think again, like just going back, you 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 reap what you sow. Well, you <laughs> you reap what you sow when it comes to your community. Yeah, genuinely. Mm. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Jesse. Uh, wow. Um, I started this crazy train ten years ago, so at the time, streaming and YouTube yeah. and internet presence is were non-existent, really. And so uh, I exist in a world where before that I stocked groceries and I put popcorn in buckets at movie theaters and I taught and I had like what I consider to be real jobs. I'm sorry to all of us. <laughs> <laughs> I very, sold cars, my dude, lucky. you get off me. So hard. <laughs> very lucky. Real jobs. Um, but I, I did these things that I was just like, transitioning into making videos on the internet is a dream. It's insane that this exists. And so uh, at the time, it was, I'm gonna make these for fun, and I'm gonna just compete with my friends to like, try and get people to watch these videos on the internet. And uh, it was, man, I think it was a World of Warcraft beta way back in the day, and we would like get onto the betas and like put videos on the internet and be like, here's a zone you don't know exists yet. And people are like, oh. And so we'd make these videos and we'd put them online. Uh, I would do old school like AMV things back in the day. Uh -huh. oh, they still exist out there. There are a few of them. Uh, they're terrible oh. and just, yeah. And I would do it just because it was a creative thing. For me it was, okay, I'm gonna make this video to get the timing right on edits. Like I'm timing it to the music, stuff like that. And it didn't ever cross my mind that there would be people who would care. Yeah. And so now, flashing forward, seeing that I have an audience and seeing that there are people who genuinely care about the content I create or weird things I do online or who show up to stuff like this, it blows me away. And so I always feel obligated to give back constantly. And I think one of the biggest things in my community is I want to make sure everyone is, is always feeling welcome and happy and like there's something for everyone. Mm -hmm. So I'm constantly changing up what I'm doing. If I'm doing one sort of video, I'm also doing another thing along the same, you know, at the same time, parallel to that. Um, I wanna make sure everyone has something they love. And I'm so obsessed with making people happy that I literally made my own convention. And it is a, it is a thing in the UK where I was like, all right, I'm gonna bring my friends and I to you and we're gonna do a convention and the whole point is you get FaceTime with us. We're going to cap out the number of people who can attend, and we're just gonna be like, come, hang out with us. It's not like we're gonna sign a thing and then push you away. Literally at night, see you at the bar, y'all. Like, it was, it was a thing that I wanted to do because I felt like I still don't understand. I still to this day don't understand why people will watch me play video games on the internet. <laughs> it seems weird. It seems real weird. And I am blown away by it, and so I always feel like, I really need to make this worth their while. So um, <laughs> that's where my mentality is with the community is I'm always trying to like, all right, how do I make this better for, for y'all? Because I truly don't get it. <laughs> and, I, and I have been doing this a long time and I'm like, oh my God. If you why? could tell 16 year old Jesse. <laughs> oh, that sweet child. <laughs> Wishing he had a PlayStation, but playing on his Super Nintendo still. Uh, he would be like, what? Yeah. Um, I think we all feel Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a weird thing to know that this exists and to know now that there are um, 15, 16, 17, 18 year olds who are just like, that's the job I want. When this is, see, what, seeing G4 on TV was the craziest thing in the world. Oh my yeah. You'd be like, do they pay these people to play video games? Yeah. Video games? And talk about them. Yeah, and channel. now everyone can be their own G4. Really, truly. It's true, especially with Twitch. Wow. Like, you have that outlet to yeah. just mm -hmm. put it out there. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, so that's how I feel. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah. I mean, it is such an interesting world and opportunity to be able to, like, we're literally here because we play games and we make games and yeah. we get to just come and talk to people about games. Like, if you would have told me when I was sitting around playing World of Warcraft that this was an actual thing, I would say, shut up, I'm trying to level. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Actually, fun fact, my character in 
World of Warcraft was named Dimbola just because of, if you ever watch Child's Play, where he's like, Awe Dewey Dumbula, like, that was what I named my World of Warcraft character after, and I'm so What was your main? Hold on, this is important. What was your main? Leave me alone. No, I'm asking! <laughs> I want to know, like, the name, class, race combo. I had a paladin. I had, like, I'm trying to remember, because I- Were you Alliance? Oh. For the horde, get out of my face. Oh, you were, all right. Uh, I'm still not okay with elves, but all right. <laughs> you know what's funny is I just created my first elf for D&D. Like I've always, I'm a cleric bard. It's who I am as a person. I'm an Asimar. It's just what it is. But I just, I just finally got like an elf and I'm super excited because I was like, I can buy ears. <laughs> it's like I could have done this beforehand, but now I have a valid reason for my husband not to be like, it's not in the budget. Yes, it is. It is now. <laughs> just kidding. Am I? <laughs> so one thing I think is <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry to you really. It was important to me. I needed to know. You can't start like a World of Warcraft story and I'm like, and yeah. I know, I know. It was funny. It was a weird time period. Like I would I was in cosmetology school at the time and I would not go to class because I would stay home and play World of Warcraft. Your priorities like, were sick. <laughs> spot on. Yeah. But we should I listen. I, Am I look, doing hair now? I do mine. But, yeah, no, I'm with you. <laughs> I play games. And so it all worked out in the grand scheme of what my life became. Yeah, yeah. Here I am now. But my favorite part of community, honestly, is just interacting with people. Like the fact that we get to talk to people and if you've ever had that feeling of being at a party and being the person that's kind of in a corner on a wall, those are my people. Those are the people that I like to talk to <laughs> because that is... Like, I go places by myself, I go to conventions by myself, and I like that feeling because I can go make new friends, I can go talk to people, and there's people that'll send messages on Twitter that are like, oh, well, I know you don't have time to talk to me, I know you have more important people to talk to, and it makes me sad because that's not true. Like, if you're in my community, I have time to talk to you. If yeah. you took the time to give a shit that words came out of my mouth or a tweet went up that I sent, you matter to me. You are a fr I, I count you friend. Like those things matter, like people matter. In community, the most important thing is that everyone matters equally. To quote the doctor, in 900 years, I've never met anyone who wasn't important before. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is one of the biggest things in life is like, stop saying I don't matter. Stop saying that no one cares what I have to say. Stop saying, that you don't belong because you do, you absolutely do. And if there's not a space that you see for yourself, make your own fucking lane. Yeah. Like carve it out yourself. Exactly. Yeah. I have sold cars, I have waited tables, I have managed restaurants, and the truest version of myself is me going out and creating a job by being myself. Yeah. That is the truest I've ever been to myself in my life is by being myself. And myself matters to somebody, so does yours. Yeah. Like be yourself, go out and be that person. You may not be everybody's cup of tea, but you're somebody's shot of whiskey. <laughs> so go and be that. Like, be. <laughs> I'm from the South. But no, like, go out into the world and just exist and just be. Like, we've all had these points in life where we've either done stuff that pushed people away, we've made bad choices, or we've been an asshole that people didn't want to be around. Let's just be for real. Own it. But... <laughs> At a certain point, like, when we start caring about people outside of ourselves, when we start being ourselves and honoring ourselves, that's the important part of the community. Because everybody in your community should not be the same person. Hmm. Like, people are, it's not forcing diversity. It's getting different perspectives. It's seeing different lifestyles. It's taking other people's experiences into your own and growing as a person. Because learning, like, if you, you don't know everything, I don't know everything, none of us know everything, but to have other people say, hey, this was my experience, this was my experience, and to take that and grow from it and learn, like, that's only gonna help your community. Honoring those things about people in your community, like, that's how you grow. That's how you grow your community, and that segues into talking about organic growth and authentic growth. You're really good at this. Wow. <laughs> I've never moderated a panel before, I just like to talk. <laughs> <laughs> but no, seriously, uh, one, I, it's something I really want to talk to you guys about because it, there's this game 
Everybody wants to have the most followers. Everybody wants to have like the most people. Like I can tell you full facts, I had 34 followers two and a half years ago. But everyone that is following me now, it is because they want to be there. I'm not going to buy your followers. I'm not going to do any of that. Be here because you want to. Like, if you want to be here and follow me, like, I don't, the thing, I think the drawback in that kind of thing is, like, yeah, you may get more eyes on you for the moment, but why are they staying? Why do they care? Why do they want to be there? And why, like, why would you not want to build from an honest place? Mm. So I think you guys all have, like, well, to more people than me. But, <laughs> like, how do you get people to stay? How do you get people to want to engage in I know a lot of it comes from just talking honestly to people, being authentic, being yourself, but what do you think is the importance of having that organic growth versus an artificial But I would say talk about your, your hobbies, obviously, the field you're working on. So, like, when it comes to me, like, a new, if a new fighting game comes out, I want to play it as much as I can talk about who's really good, talk about my favorite character, who do I enjoy to play, who am I gonna use in tournaments, or if I'm at a tournament, I'll talk about, like, I just made out of pools, I made top eight, I just got bodied, stuff like that. And, um, but besides just the gaming part, obviously you guys know me as a, as a fighting game player, but what about, what about my other hobbies? What else do I like, right? So I post like a lot about anime, I post a lot about just like different food, I post a lot about like, like my daughter, my family, and then I also make really amazing tier lists. So <laughs> that's also something that people really like to argue me about, but you know, it's mm. a fact is a fact when it comes to my tier list. <laughs> uh, you know, that's, see, I know, I understand. You guys understand. But a lot, a lot other than that is that people wanna know who you are as a person besides the field that you're, you're really known for. Because, you know, growing up in like 1985, I'm sure we have a lot of things in common, but sometimes people are just afraid to ask you because they, they view you as this internet celebrity that you're like, I can't talk to this guy. I can't talk to this girl. I can't talk to this person. Like, it's not, it's not possible. But I think um, what I like to do is just, I just want to just always tweet out my thoughts mm -hmm. in general and then get people engaged, have conversations. You know, anytime I have a, a question that I, I need an answer to, I don't go to Google, I just go to Twitter. How do I do this? And people answer me because they want to just be part of the conversation, right? We don't need Google anymore. We have you are Twitter. a brave man. We have Twitter for those answers, even though there are very, a lot of trolls, a lot of memes, <laughs> What's a a troll? you know, random anime gifts coming as an answer. There's going to be someone that's going to be very helpful, you know what I mean? It's flavor. Yeah, it's flavor. Why not? Have a laugh in the, in the sequence at the same time. Google doesn't give you anime gifts. That's what I'm talking about, you know? So... <laughs> and, you know, obviously, just stuff like that really helps. Like, for like, if we're like a really big movie comes out, Avengers Endgame, all of us are gonna talk about it, right? We're all fans of Marvel Universe, and I mean, if you haven't seen the movie, then shame on you. But it's it's you know, me and Jesse, we talked about Star Wars at PAX South, and yeah. I'm like, we had a conversation. That's something in common we had. I know he's a big Star Wars fan. I try to trigger him, saying that you know, <laughs> it, ep Episode Nine was a great movie. I thought it was an amazing movie. <laughs> Was this at dinner? I feel like I vaguely remember this conversation. It was, and it, it, was it was good. It was God, amazing. Do not action. start with me. This panel's about to change. Jesse, <laughs> please tell us your feelings. We'd love to know. No, you would not. And, and that's how we'll you start organic conversations. <laughs> and, so yeah, that's what I do. You know, honestly, I think that the, the, the most important thing for me is being uh, accessible f as a developer and showing that, it, you know, it's not like I have a secret sauce that makes me different than other people. I just really love video games and thought about them a lot and, and, and started making them to, to explore how they work. Um, and you know, my origin story is literally kind of wandering into a, to a conference much like this and having a conversation with someone just because like, oh, you work on EverQuest, that's cool, but I noticed these things about your AI, blah, 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 blah. 
And like when you think about uh, what it means to be a developer today or to be a streamer, um, to be someone who's really big in esports, it really is about you know coming up from the, that passion alone. So just really being authentic about um, the fact that it's I'm not special, you know. So I, t I tweet and post about things that are normal to me, um, random things I see during the day, my hobbies and all that stuff as well. But I think that for me, the, the real, uh, like the rubber meets the road at these shows when I can organize an event for developers and make them feel like their struggle is real and it's not, um, it's not unique. So it's very common, for example, if you start a game company, um, you realize that it's really hard to run a business and it's really hard to make money making games and you can have a lot of big hopes and dreams, but maybe the first two things or three things you make or maybe even the first 10 things you make and put out there nobody pays attention to, right? Sure. And people are like, oh, you know, maybe I shouldn't, maybe I'm not cut out for it. And you need to just be there and say, you know what? Everyone's going through the same thing. We're all just trying. We're all doing the best we can. Um, and when people come up to you to really be, to be vulnerable and to be honest about it, if, you know, someone says, hey, how are you doing? You, you know, I'm not doing so great right now but I'm really glad to be here with you right now, right? You don't always have to have a face on, you don't always have to be perfect, just to be your normal, regular self, like a normal person with that person, and to be open to listening to people talk about the things that they're passionate about. Don't try to drive the conversation so much, just like be friendly and listen. Um, and I think, uh, you know, I've met some people that I thought were really cool and famous, and they weren't cool. <laughs> and then I've met some people who I thought were really cool and famous, and they were amazing. And the, the big difference is that they didn't bring this huge personality into the conversation with me. They just let me be me, and they were them. And so I try to mirror that behavior whenever I'm in an event like this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I feel like in, in the streaming space, a lot of people, speaking on growth and organic growth, I feel like a lot of people can be, um, almost feel like they have to be pigeonholed and forced into playing like the, the top games. You know, mm. like they, they look at the categories and they're like, all right, League of Legends, Fortnite, I'm in. I have my roster of games. Um, but I feel like for, for how I started, I, you know, I started with technically horror games, um, League of Legends, Minecraft, Counter-Strike, Overwatch. Um, everything else in between. I, I think that the, the common denominator was just, um, you know, like you're saying, sharing a piece of yourself yeah. and just and carrying that throughout the games and just connecting with your community and um, connecting on your interests and connecting on your hobbies so that, you know, if you're playing Fortnite endlessly and you're feeling kind of beat up about it or if you feel like you want to switch up games but you're not sure because you feel like people aren't going to you know, want to watch that game, and of course, people are going to have preferences with games. But um, if you can build a like a strong core and connection around your yourself as a person, and genuinely just connect with human beings, I feel like people people want to grow with you, and people want to want to follow you and see what you're doing. So, and I feel like even beyond that, not just that that kind of connection, but connecting people with each other, so they want to keep coming back, so that no matter what game you're playing, people just want to stay connected to each other. So usually at the end of my streams, I like to. Uh, I like to call out if people want to be like an open inbox for somebody and if they want to kind of allow themselves to have like an open messaging so people can yeah. message them and reach out like if you're having a bad day or if you just want to send um, memes or if you want to like connect with people or whatever um, to put a heart in the chat like at the end of the at the end mm -hmm. of the stream and anyone who's kind of like feeling kind of bummy and just want to get some stuff out they know that they have like a full community of people like in front of them, they can click on any of these names and these people want to connect with them and, and they want to help them out and be there for them. So I think it's it's not only connecting yourself with the community, but also connecting your community yeah. with the community. That's great. Yeah. Uh, just really quickly, um, how many people in our audience here are uh, streaming or making videos or just doing anything on the internet and the, what's, What's the right word? I don't want to say influencer because that's a garbage word and I hate it. But, <laughs> but you are creators, one. Usually what people it's gross. Say. I know what I am. Yeah. I, know. <laughs> I know what I am. <laughs> but, I just want to know how many of you are, are invested make, in this as content. a future adventure in life. That's great. Very cool. All right. So let me just tell you the real truth. S stop following numbers. Don't look at numbers. Yeah. Get off that thing. Don't yeah. compare yourself to anyone else. Don't even look at that stuff. Right? Do it from a place of... This is what I enjoy, and I'm having fun doing it, and even if no one's watching it, have the best time of your life. Because it is, it, it, the way you foster community, the way you create something that is, that is both wholesome and engaging for the audience, 
and like makes people feel welcome is by not being that person who's like, all right, the reason why I'm streaming is because I need to get X number of views and play this many things and play this many hours. Stop that. It will kill you. Hmm. It is the worst thing you can do. I would say, I'm, I'm not going to say 100%, I'll say 99.9% .9 of the people that you admire who have exploded and become very successful did not start out being like, I'm going to become successful. They never thought that. It just happened. And so now they have to deal with all the issues that come with that. But in the beginning, they were not like, I'm going to be the best person on the internet ever. It did not happen. They just lucked into it and stopped trying to pretend like that's going to happen. It, you need to just do it because you love it. And yeah. then when it happens, you will appreciate everything that came along with it. Your community will love you way more and they'll grow with you as like the people who are with you from day one and when they see you become something that none of you thought was going to happen it's super impressive to see the people that are like your champions and and want to be on every stream and want to go along with you on that adventure but um really truly just like to be yourself yeah. do what you want to do and you will grow a community of people who feel the same way as you do and like the same things you like, and it will come from a place of honesty and a place of love, rather than people who are just like, you're the number one streamer, so I'm here for you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> right? That sucks. Those are the people who are gonna come on and just harass you the entire time. They're not there for you, they're there because you're popular and they're like, they wanna glom onto some of that. Do all those people have the same accent? Oh yeah, you know we do. Um, <laughs> So you're telling us that's how you become the very best, like no one ever was? I would say if you want to be the best around and never, ever, ever going to let anyone down, <laughs> that oh. is how you would do that. Oh. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of people out there who I think they see success as a numbers thing. And you need to understand that you will never, even I think all of us up here yeah. have seen people who started after them and immediately were way better than them. And you have to come, you have to like come to the realization that sometimes people just have better breaks, sometimes people are just better than you, sometimes people are like, they have stuff figured out you don't have figured out. Or more free time. Yeah, there's so many factors and you can either spend your entire time being like, how do I get that, how do I be that? Like I, 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 I was, you know, this is, I'm so frustrated. Or you can just be like, God, I have people who show up to streams and hang out with me, and this is a job I have that like I make money and I can pay bills, and I'm so thankful that I get to do something like this. And that's the the mindset you have to have is that this is an incredible thing that you're doing, and to have the luck that you have and to to go on the adventure that you're going on, you should be very thankful for that, and and be thankful for every single person who shows up and is a positive member of your community because that's how you grow, and that's how when people come they see all those people and they're like. Man, I want to stay here. And so, yeah, just positive vibes. Yay. Cool. Positive vibes. I think there's positive just... vibes. Huh? 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 Yeah. I think it's one thing that I'm I'm very grateful for in my community is there's vulnerability. And I feel like not just from me, but from other people. Like you don't just come to my page and it's like all D and D all the time. It's also pictures of my baby mm -hmm. and my family and like learning. Like you're seeing all of these different sides of someone, and you don't have to do that. Like if you like keeping your personal life personal, that's you to each their own. But I am posting forty thousand pictures of my baby. For me <laughs> your baby is adorable, actually. So. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> oh, and also because I am the younger sister in an equation, I would like to shout out my sister Danielle, who is watching this stream and being supportive right now. And also, Danielle. Danielle. Hi. Danielle got a Super Nintendo for her eighth birthday, and we proceeded to play Super Nintendo all of the effing time. So shout out to the three up moon. And <laughs> 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 you know when you go back after you get your cape and you fly up on the first level oh, and there's <laughs> just saying. <laughs> If it weren't for her, then we wouldn't have had one. It was super cool. I remember that birthday of hers because I felt like I got the gift. Mm. Hi, Danielle. Thanks for being my big sister. I like you sometimes. I'm just kidding all the time. <laughs> so, speaking of siblings, let's talk about mental health. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Best transition of all of PAX. Just nailed that. <laughs> One, <Wow. Pax. laughs> You said you're not twins? Oh, I was like, she stole your face. That's great. <laughs> Which, I, that's, having a sister is great. It's a built-in support system. It's a built-in person to, you know how they always say you should get punched in the face at least once in the life so you learn how to, like, be a better person? That's what they're for. So, um. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't care what anybody says. Sisters fight more than brothers. Like, I'm telling y'all, like, it was SmackDown sometimes. <laughs> and she's cooler than me. And I just own that. She also has a better style, whatever. So anyway, mental health. <laughs> um, <laughs> why? It's, I think it's very important to understand that there is a... We have an opportunity, especially as your platform grows, to open up about these things and to be very honest about who you are, what you're going through, and because not everything is roses, especially when you count in trolls and people that are like sending you messages that are insane in your DMs all the time, or their penis, whatever. <laughs> and I mean like this, that is a real, would oh, you no. like to see my DMs? This is real life. I don't want to, yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine actually. And it's important I bring that up with the segue of sisters. It sounds like a joke, but to have a support system in place because yeah. it is hard being a part of internet culture and streaming sometimes when if you show like your chest, then all of a sudden you're a skank and you're only doing this for the views or you're doing this for this. And like mm -hmm. people don't understand a shirt is a shirt. A person is a person. An outfit is an outfit. And one does not make anyone anything. So like you have to learn how to find different ways. So I wanna know like what you do to deal with bad mental health days, like days where it seems like I don't wanna do this anymore, like I don't believe in my, it's not even that you don't believe in yourself, but when you find yourself saying like, no one cares what I have to say, the voice in your head is saying like, you're terrible, no one cares about you, like all of those things that just feel like they can swallow you on any given day, like a day where you don't want to go and stream and talk to people about your game. And like I've found for myself, like some of those days, I will get on a Twitter live stream and I will talk about it through tears because that is real. And I think that vulner like that vulnerability, like that realness, like showing people, like I'm not just gonna stream when like my face is beat and I look cool, like today I'm coming to talk to you as a real person that is sad or is having a really hard time, but showing that, like, those things are important and those things are very real. One thing I've, I'm not trying to, like, talk, talk, but I'm trying to segue my, to you guys, but one thing for me, I went through a very big spell of depression. I had lost my best friend, was killed in a car accident, and it was like a very bad, bad time. I was also making really stupid choices, bad decisions. And I decided that I wanted to drive my car off the road and I told my doctor that, that I wanted to drive into a tree and I didn't want to live anymore. Because I just, all I could think of was the bad things that I did, how I hadn't accomplished anything, how I wasn't a good person. I didn't feel like I deserved to be here. And Mind you, this is all those years ago, and I think that person doesn't know that I'd be standing right here using that to say, shit is bad sometimes. It gets super dark, and you get very lost, but those days don't last. Like, those days leave. And the best part of that scenario was I got help. Mm -hmm. I went and I talked to someone. When it got to its worst, I went and... I went to an inpatient treatment center that I was afraid for two years that I was too embarrassed to mention that I went to because I didn't want people to think I was crazy or I was any of those labels. You're not crazy, you're getting help. There's no harm in getting help. This community and the internet gets so negative sometimes and it is loud and the negativity is sometimes louder than the positive. And you have to be mindful of the fact that your mental health matters. Saying I need help, saying today I am not okay, there is not a bit of shame in it and you have to own that space. Mm. You deserve to be here, you deserve to exist, because you don't know where you're gonna go from me at that low point to me being able to talk to you guys today is fucking huge for me, and 
I just want you guys to know that you matter, and that is why every single person in your community matters. You all matter. You all deserve to be here. Mm -hmm. And I want to know how you guys deal with your bad days. Oh. <laughs> that wasn't in my notes. <laughs> Well, that was a lot of feels right there. Yeah, that was. Nice. <laughs> it was not in my notes, I promise. Yeah, no, no, you're you're good. It's a, it's a lot of feels. Um, I don't know. It's, I feel like the way right now, like I grew up with like nothing, and to some, and now I have something where I can support so many people in my life, so much of my family. So I'm really about positivity. Everything I really do is about positivity, and I understand that negativity is like so popular right now, especially mm -hmm. the internet. You know, anime, avatar, Twitter profiles, they, <laughs> they just wanna be negative, man. Um, but there are, obviously, when I do post about certain things, a lot of people get really nitpicky, triggered, and it's it sucks, right? Sometimes I'm just like, man, I, I don't know what to say. So normally I just avoid it and everything, but I do have a lot of friends that are in a similar position as myself that really has to say something or they just get triggered or they talk to me about their problems. You know, people will call them like overweight, they'll call them a skank, they'll say like you're ugly. And I'm like, just avoid those people yeah, because nice. yeah, because those are there those are people that are just wanna be negative. But then what about the people, what about your fans, the people that actually, you know, give like a crap about what you're doing in your life, what you're doing for the community, what you're doing just to grow yourself as a person. So though, I'm like, I always tell them those are the people that really matter and you know, there's always gonna be some, some people out there that really wanna help you. Even though you might not know them at all, they just wanna tell you that, hey, we are here for you. Take your time, we will always be here for you, we will support you, and that's kind of like the life I live, I'm all about the positivity yeah. because you only live once, man. YOLO, YOLO is a true factor mm -hmm. and you really want to make the best out of it. Like, yeah. I always want to make my grandma proud. You know, mm -hmm. she, she passed away last year yeah. and like, I always want to make her happy because I didn't have a mom or a dad to really raise me as a kid. It's either my grandma or Uncle Phil on Fresh Prince of Bel-Air that grew me up as a, as a child. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Well, that's awesome. You know, I think that um, everybody goes through these periods. I, I feel that almost anyone that I meet that I can really talk to has had a moment like the one that we were just listening to, right? Where you feel like maybe it's not gonna go the way you planned and it starts to feel like things are n unraveling around you and you feel groundless. Um, and throughout, uh, throughout my life, I've had um, a pretty strong meditation practice where I sit for 20 minutes a day um, to just be with myself and think about it. I did it this morning in sunshine outside of the convention center, just to feel where I'm at. And I think um, over the years as I've interacted with a lot of developers, both, both online in the DMs and then in events, um, I spend a lot of time listening, especially to women, uh, talk about their experiences being in our community, and that's not always a great story. And what I try to communicate consistently in those conversations, especially when they're private um, and they're about difficult things, is that um, you have, like you said, you have a right to be here. You have a right to express yourself and to be heard. And it's it's not you, you know, that the things you're experiencing, you're not imagining, they are real. Um, and I'm here for you, you know, and I believe that your voice is, is, is the future of our industry. Um, during the really difficult times in games, um, you know, the Gamergate period, um, a lot of my female friends, especially my, my trans friends on the internet that were in gaming, were, were harassed and, and really abused. And um, I'm not the kind of person that likes to see that stuff happen and then nothing change. And it, was, it started to really bother me that, that these things were happening and nobody was really making a concrete effort to change it. Um, so I worked with a few other women in the games industry and a few larger sponsors, kind of behind the scenes, to build out a special day at the Game Developers Conference uh, where developers of color and people that are in their mid-career professionals uh, um, of communities of difference can come and actually what we do is we give them a day-long media training. So we have them come up on stage and give a talk, we record them, then we play that recording back for them, they see themselves on stage, they get to practice, we get them headshots, teach them how to write a bio. We do it for 36 people every year. Um, this year was gonna be our seventh year, but um, TDC's been postponed, so hopefully we'll do it again soon. Um, but but if you think about that, six people every year, 
that builds a community of people. So right now there are 36 people that have gone through this experience. They've learned to support each other, but also they've seen themselves reflected on panels and in the community and presenting. So in addition to doing this for them, we give them opportunities later to speak and represent their communities. And I think, for me, the number one thing that games can do is put more people on stage and give them more of a chance to talk about their experiences. So it isn't just about being authentic as ourselves, it's about um, setting aside space for the newer people that are coming up and giving them a chance to have that voice. And I actually think it's really fantastic that this program exists because next year there's gonna be five new people up here doing exactly what we're doing. So I'm, I really wanna say thanks to PAX for having us here at this show, you know? Yeah. Um, I feel like a lot of it, uh, when I think about bad mental health days and I think about going through struggles like that, um, I feel like a lot of it for me is uh, one thing that I've learned is just being kinder to myself. And meditation and yoga yeah. have been a big part of my practice for the last couple of years, and I so. feel like that's been entirely life-changing. Yeah. But um, just being kinder to myself because I know that if I want to be my best for, for a community or, or make other people happy. It's hard to fill other people's cups when mine is half full. So I wanna make sure to take care of my own cup so I can spilleth over, I guess, <laughs> and help spread that positivity. But I feel like a lot of it um, also comes down to, especially on, on Twitch or any YouTube comments, anything like that, it's easy, to it's easy to read things that will tear you down or just like mean just to be a dick, but yeah. um, I think a lot of it comes back to just boosting the good, like yeah. finding the good people in your community, paying more attention to them, and I feel like if you're if you're fostering that that supportive community, they'll kind of take care of it on their own. You know, like if people come in and roll up your to your Twitch stream and they're kind of just being dicks, I feel like if you have a, a supportive community, people will shut that down, and it kind of you know self sustains this this awesome positive environment. So, mm. yeah. yeah. Uh, I think everything you guys have said so far is spot on. Um, I'm going to add something that might sound crazy, but uh, I think putting yourself in a place of empathy, and a, a long time ago, I was on Twitter and I got in an argument with like just a random stranger, and I was like, I'm going to destroy this dude. <laughs> and I posted this response, and he posted a video that was like him on his front porch, and he's like, Dude, I've been a fan of yours for years, and I like oh. don't want you to hate me, and I'm I'm so so, and I like, it shook me. I was like, this is just like a dude who just said some stuff on the internet, and like, boy, we all need to take a minute and and think about this whole talking to each other online thing, and I now, even though it'll never change, and there will always have someone come at you and say something awful. I always, before I think about how I react or how I'll respond or anything, I always have to have a moment that's just like, is this like a 12 year old kid? Yeah. Is this like, who is this person that's, that's doing this? And is it worth me feeling something for this comment or worrying about what was said? Do I address in some way? There's like a, a checklist in my head of everything that I see when I see someone come at me. Because I'm like, I don't, as much as I want to say to this person like, you don't know, you don't like know my life and you're saying things about me that are not true, that kind of thing. I know nothing about this person either. And so even though I fundamentally probably 100% disagree with them and what they said is probably awful, I'm like, okay, I don't even know why that was said. I don't, like there's so much to it and I feel like there's a lot that, you know, we need to take a step back a little sometimes and just be like, whoa, all right. I think we have gotten a little too far into yelling at each other and so, I think that that goes to what kind of community you want to create and, and making sure that everyone in your community feels welcome by making it a positive place. That you think sometimes about what's being said, even if it's like the most negative, awful thing in the world, and you're like, you seem like a piece of shit. The comment was a shitty comment, but I don't know that person at all. Yeah. And while I may say like, oh, I kind of get what you're about, you really don't, because the internet is walls upon walls upon walls and then text. And you have no clue who this person is. And so I think sometimes it takes a minute to just be like, okay, I need to check myself first and control what I can control, which is just me. Because in, in the world, shitty, terrible things happen all the time. Bad things happen to you. And the only thing you control is your response to it. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes you have to be like, okay, let's do this thing. And then you move from there. 
but take a moment first. And I think that's something we should always think about as well Definitely. when dealing with stuff on the internet. Absolutely. That is true. And then in my case, sometimes you just read them for filth. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> am I kidding? No. Um, so I want to thank you guys so much for coming out. We are out of time. I thank you so much for taking your time to be here with us today. Um, where can we find you guys on the interwebs? Justin? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at J Wong with three G's. Uh, that's where I usually post everything. Um, same thing for Twitch, Instagram, it's all J Wong three G's. Yeah, same for me. I'm just at Haneke, my last name. It's the only last name spelled like mine. So if you Google it, you will find me. <laughs> I'm around. <laughs> just at OMG, it's Firefox everywhere. Yep. Yeah. On everything. At Jesse Cox everywhere. At Christina Ariel, K R Y S T I N A A R I E L L E. Thank you guys again. Kate, I appreciate you for being here. Yeah. She's been <laughs> tweeting. We've been like internet friends the last couple days, so I'm really excited about it. Thank you Thank guys you. for everything. Have a great day. Enjoy PAX.